The New England Patriots listed 14 players as limited on Wednesday, including quarterback Cam Newton, abdomen, guard Shaq Mason, calf, cornerback J.C. Jackson, hip, knee, and kicker Nick Folk back. Newton, with abdomen injury, worried the fans. The question is, how will he play without recovering from his injury, can he lead the Patriots to the playoffs? And ahead is the battle against the Ram. To answer that question, we need to review what Newton did over the weekend. Cam Newton's second touchdown Sunday against the Los Angeles Chargers garnered rave reviews from the New England Patriots offensive line. Facing second and goal from the two-yard line, Newton made a beeline for the end zone on a designed quarterback run. He made it halfway there before being stuffed by linebacker Nick Vigil at the one. Vigil, though, could only halt the 6'5", 245-pound QB's momentum. Newton remained on his feet and continued to inch forward. Moments later, left guard Joe Thuthuni arrived to push the pile. Center David Andrews, who'd wrestled defensive tackle Linville Joseph to the turf, leapt to his feet and did the same. Left tackle Jermaine Aluemunor looped around back, grabbed hold of Newton's shoulder pads and pulled him toward the goal line. All the while, Newton kept his feet churning and, amid the twisted mass of bodies, eventually crossed the plane. The touchdown gave the Patriots a 21-point lead in a game they would go on to win 45-0. Runs like that, plays most NFL quarterbacks aren't physically capable of making, have endeared Newton to the men in charge of blocking for him. It's awesome, man, Andrews said Monday in a video conference. It makes you want to protect him, block for him, and know if you give him a chance, he's going to do everything he can to get in the end zone. On his second touchdown, I believe, they kind of had him at the one-yard line, and we just kinda bolted in there at the last second and got it in. I mean, you love that in a lot, backs do that, fall forward, get those extra yards. And he's pretty, pretty special with the ball in his hand at times. Earlier in Sunday's win, Newton picked up two tough yards on fourth and two on the Patriots' opening possession and dove over a pile for his first rushing touchdown, taking a shot to his injured abdomen in the process. Though his passing production has dipped considerably of late, he's the first starting QB to throw for fewer than 85 yards in back-to-back -back games and win both since Achille Smith in 2000, Newton's ability to make plays with his legs has been vital to New England's recent success. In last week's upset of the Arizona Cardinals, Newton set up Nick Folk's game-winning field goal with a 14-yard scamper on 3rd and 13. Against the Chargers, he rushed 14 times for 48 yards, including an impressive 14-yard scramble and two third-down conversions. Newton has scored 11 rushing touchdowns this season. Only running backs Dalvin Cook 13 and Derrick Henry 12 have more. Newton's 435 rushing yards rank third among QBs behind Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray, and only Jackson has more rushing attempts than Newton's 106. Unlike the elusive Jackson and the lightning quick Murray, Newton's rushing style is built more on power, which his O-linemen certainly appreciate. It definitely is encouraging, Thuni said Tuesday. He's a big guy and he can bring a nice thud. He's a powerful guy. When he runs hard like that, I think it really encourages all of us to keep going harder. Everyone is playing for each other, which I think is awesome. That's a great feeling. We want to give everything we have, because he's giving everything he has. So it's awesome. We all want to play hard for each other. One thing is for sure, Newton is healthy and ready to play despite the abdomen injury. Then, can he make the Patriots into the playoffs? So strange as it seems the Patriots do indeed have a path but it's quite narrow and requires a good deal of help. The first order of business is obvious, win the remaining four games to go 10-6. While a 9-7 record wouldn't officially eliminate them, a loss would make things exceedingly more difficult. So we'll stick with the Patriots finishing 10-6. Even if that's the case, plenty of help elsewhere is needed. Through 13 weeks of action the 6-6 Patriots are on the outside looking in. For this exercise we'll assume Pittsburgh and Kansas City win their respective divisions. Each has 11 wins so regardless they can't fall behind the Patriots in the standings. Tennessee 8-4 and Indy 8-4 are locked in a tight battle for the AFC South title. Both have paths to the 11-win mark as well with the Titans facing Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay and Houston down the stretch while the Colts see Las Vegas, Houston, Pittsburgh and Jacksonville. Assuming the Titans win the division, slightly easier road, the Colts join the Browns 9-3 and Dolphins 8-4 in the wildcard mix. 
Baltimore, 6-5, Tuesday night game at Dallas still pending, and the Raiders, 7-5, are also contenders. That means the Patriots need to finish ahead of three of those five teams to earn one of the three wild card spots. However, the Patriots' tiebreaker situation is quite favorable with head-to-head -head wins over the Raiders and two over the Dolphins, assuming the Pats win out. Plus the Patriots' 8-4 conference mark would top the list among those teams. So finding a way to get the Ravens. Dolphins and Raiders to 10-6 appears to be the best path. We're giving the Browns a spot with wins over the Jets and Giants enough to get to 11 wins. Of the three Miami seems destined for some losses. The Dolphins face Kansas City, Vegas and Buffalo as well as the Patriots. We've assumed a loss to New England, so a loss to the Chiefs gets Miami to 10 wins at most. That's one. The Raiders would have to win out to get to 11 wins and they face Indy, the Chargers, Miami and Denver. This one's a bit tougher because two of those games are against fellow contenders Miami and Indy, so one team has to win. Things can change quickly, but when Indy and Vegas face off on Sunday a Colts win benefits New England more. That would mean the Raiders max out at 10-6, and the Patriots would have the tiebreaker edge. That's two. The Ravens need to run the table to get to 11-5, and they have the schedule to do it. After Tuesday's tilt with Dallas, Baltimore Hill, the Giants and Bengals. The Browns will be tough and the Giants are playing well, but if the Ravens can get their act together that's the easiest slate of the group. Let's go back to the Colts. We assumed a win over the Raiders, but a loss would mean Indy would need to win out to get to 11. A loss at Pittsburgh would drop the Colts to the 10-win group, and the Patriots would have a better conference record as well. Apologies for the popsicle headache I no doubt just induced. There are a lot of machinations still to be worked out, and four weeks is an eternity in the NFL. Assuming wins and losses regardless of opponent is dangerous business. A lot can change with one game, and it will. But despite being two games behind multiple teams with just four to play, the Patriots are still alive.